Hi guys, this is Ranjit and let's talk about the Apple's new silicon that is the M1 chip. And I feel this is can be sort of a game changer. And yes, Apple announced three new devices that will be coming with this M1 chip. Uh, that's the new MacBook Air, even the uh, Apple uh, Mac Mini and even the MacBook Pro 13 inches. That's not the exciting thing. The exciting thing is that N1 chip and if guys if you recall Apple has been sort of a leader already uh, with the mobile SOC with their A13 uh, the latest A14 Bionic chip they have a huge leap over other mobile SOCs but now uh, with this uh, computer chip uh, they are trying to actually do it even in this computer space uh, but again this chip is very different generally if you know uh, in your laptop you might be having chips from Intel and AMD and these are x86 chips uh, but uh, what apple is doing with this m1 chip is this is the, again arm architecture so again this is like uh, what uh, uh, processing that is used on your smartphones so let's talk about this one it's the new m1 chip and again as it's apple they gave some graphs numbers those are actually mind-boggling numbers that they have thrown at because generally uh, what we have seen in this uh, what do you say traditional computing cpu uh, increases that we see we generally see a performance leap of about 15 percent max to about 20 percent every generation apple is actually claiming 3x the performance with this m1 chip that is 300 percent which is not heard so let's have a closer look at this one and yes i will try to get a new macbook air and i'll compare it with some of the laptops that i have for example this is the older uh, macbook air that i have that is having the intel uh, chip so again i think so this will uh, be coming by end of november in india also so let's see but let's first have a look at the chip itself and as you can see this is the first screenshot of the chip this is actually based on fine nanometer process and here again apple has a huge leap if you recall intel is uh, stuck to 14 nanometer yes some of their uh, what do you say chips are now moving to 10 nanometer process but most of them are still stuck to 14 uh, that way i would say amd is doing better job it's on 7 nanometer but apple has directly moved to the 5 nanometer with this m1 chip and what this helps them to do is pack in a lot of transistors uh, apple claims actually they have 16 billion transistors on this m1 chip and uh, again if you uh, talk about the architecture again it's this is like something like smartphones this is an eight core chip that they have but it's divided into two parts first is a four core that's a high performance chip that is used for heavy tasks and then we have four other chips that is used for power low tasks uh, that way the chip is more power efficient so it's this we have seen a lot in what do you say mobile soc so they are doing something like this but the big thing is that they claim that this uh, m1 chip can get almost 3x the performance in terms of cpu tasks so that is something we have to note of course as it's based on arm architecture it will be way more efficient than intel uh, chips and one big difference that we have on this m1 chip is that for example if you have your computer or even a laptop uh, you know that in some of the laptops not every laptop you can easily upgrade the ram because the ram is separate you can just add modules if it's allowed but uh, with this M1 chip, uh, if you look at this uh, actually screenshot, uh, the memory is part of the CPU. So you simply cannot expand uh, uh, the memory. For, for example, uh, the base variant comes with 8 gigabytes of RAM. So if you're looking for 16 gigabytes or something, uh, you have to actually order it when you're buying the computer because the RAM is within the chip. And yes, Due to this, uh, actually the I.O. operations and stuff can become a lot more faster. But in terms of upgradability, you have to be careful. You, If you're buying these new, uh, what do you say, Apple Silicon chips on a later state, you simply cannot add RAM because the RAM is now part of the CPU. That's actually a big change. Uh, now moving to uh, the GPU, uh, Apple says that this one is uh, having 8 core uh, GPU. And they threw some numbers that this is almost 2x the performance we don't know with what GPUs they were comparing. I don't think so. They were comparing a dedicated NVIDIA or AMD Radeon chips. So it'll be interesting to see how it performs. And again, uh, because it's on their own architecture, very efficient. Uh, they say that again, uh, even in GPU tasks, it's very power efficient. And that is one of the reasons that on the new MacBook Air, uh, for example, this is the old MacBook Air. In fact, uh, this is the same design even on the new one. 
if I would have told you this is the arm, you would have to believe it. Uh, but uh, they simply do not have any fans on the new model uh, because they say that uh, these chips do not heat that much. So that is actually a very interesting thing. The MacBook Air generally it's silent, but when I push it, for example, if I'm doing some uh, video editing or any heavy task, the fans come out. But on the new one, the MacBook Air, they simply do not have any fans. They say that because it generates so less heat. Uh, next thing is uh, uh, the advantage that you'll get it is that generally low heat. Also, uh, battery life should be actually good. They shared some stats. I'll uh, share that in the later part of the video. And also, because uh, uh, these are ARM-based chips, these will act like your smartphone. For example, the moment you click on your smartphone, it wakes, uh, for example, wakes up like this. So they say that will happen to the new Max instant on performance that you will get. Uh, now moving to some of the things that I'm a little bit skeptical and if you guys uh, know uh, till date most of the what do you say computer apps are written for x86 architecture that's by Intel and uh, uh, Intel and uh, yeah, what do you say AMD but now Apple is doing this is ARM based uh, so apps have to be sort of rewritten to take advantage of this uh, Apple says that uh, they will have universal app and the good thing is that at apple native apps for example pages uh, numbers etc this is the word alternative that apple gives uh, and again even productivity apps uh, like imovie and even final cut pro are already universal apps that means they will work even on this new arm based mac as well as intel uh, apps but again if let's say a developer hasn't ported their apps to ARM architecture, then it will use emulation to make it run and they say this is Rosetta 2 and here I'm a little bit uh, skeptical and I'm keeping my fingers crossed how well the apps that are not natively compiled for this new ARM chip work on this one using Rosetta 2. Apple claims that it works very well but this is something that uh, I'm waiting to see how it does. They say that uh, other popular uh, developers like uh, Adobe etc uh, will be releasing their popular apps like Photoshop etc uh, very soon but again if you know uh, there are tons and tons of apps that are natively written for the x86 and it'll be interesting to see how these apps will run on this new ARM chip using Rosetta 2 because it's again sort of what do you say virtualization and converting it on the fly let's see how it works uh, according to Apple, it works very well, but uh, let's see. That is something that I have to test. Uh, but good thing is that as this is on ARM, this chip, all the native apps that you have found on your iPhone and even iPads will actually run on this Mac and they'll run actually uh, very fast. Uh, but again, I'm a little bit skeptical about some of the uh, apps that need virtualization. Uh, for example, if you are sort of a developer or anything, maybe you run VM uh, apps, how will they run on uh, this one? So yes, the apps that are already compiled for this, for example, the universal apps, and I'm pretty sure developers will move uh, their popular apps to universal apps, but those apps are not using the universal apps. That's a question, how well will they run on this new Mac? Uh, again, Apple is throwing numbers of about 3x CPU performance, 2x the graphic uh, performance, that will be interesting to see how it performs and uh, what I'll do is I'll try to get the new MacBook uh, Air. Uh, I have this MacBook Air and I'll try to compare it with this one. I also have a MacBook Pro 13 inch. Uh, let's see how it performs and uh, what are the real world figures for. For example, guys, I always like uh, to believe in real world usage. For example, uh, a couple of months ago, I did a video about Intel chips versus AMD chips using real world applications and we'll also try to do the same with the new MacBook Air and see how much of an improvement do we see in real world usage so again stay tuned for that and uh, yes uh, uh, the um, MacBook Pros uh, will have actually a fan and even the MacBook uh, sorry uh, the Mac mini will also have a fan with but again the common thing is that all of them are using this M1 chip so let's see, I'm also keeping my fingers crossed to see. And yes, because of this M1 chip, Apple was throwing some numbers regarding the battery life. Let me actually show you that slide. And according to them, as you can see for the MacBook Pro 13, 
Uh, they say that you can get about 17 to 20 hours of battery life per charge and the MacBook Air should get about 15 to about 18 hours. So again, very impressive numbers, but let's see how did they uh, perform in the real world. So again, stay tuned to my channel uh, when I get the new MacBook Air. Uh, we'll definitely test it out in the real world and let you guys know the real performance. Anyways, guys, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Uh, what do you guys think about this uh, Apple M1 chip because uh, if this really works this is a real game changer I would say and Intel really needs to work hard because we have seen Intel lagging even with the AMD Ryzen 45 uh, what do you say 4000 series of uh, chips that we are getting for laptops and with this one if the Apple M1 chip really performs well in real life Apple has taken a huge lead. Anyways, but what do you guys think about the same? Let me know. And what do you think of this new trend of having the memory within the CPU? Uh, because if it's like that, you simply cannot upgrade it uh, moving uh, forward. For example, let's say you want to buy a machine with 8 gigabytes of RAM and later on upgrade to 16 that you can do with current laptop. You simply can't do that stuff with this. So what do you guys think about the same? Anyways, guys, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. This is Ranjit and I hope to see you in my next video. Take care, guys.